So, <clears throat> hello everyone. As you see, I'm saying October yada 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 NA and possibly ZAA. Uh, the reason that you see that is possible that I have to cancel my class for ZAA tomorrow. I'm not sure yet, so if that's the case, then they're going to use this as an asynchronous, asynchronous recording for the session that they have tomorrow. Uh, so that's the reason we have ZAA over there. Don't be confused with it. You are at the right class. Um, we talked about the operator overloading last time. We completed everything, quickly going through them. Um, explaining how things work very quickly, actually. We, I created an uh, integer class and that integer to kind of create a smart integer and said we're going to um, do everything that a regular integer can do with this uh, integer that we had. We talked about binary operators with side effect and without side effect and we said all operators must be first be attempted to be done as member variables unless we have no other way. Okay, so we should not have uh, non-member operators unless we have to. The two possibilities that we had for non-member operators were if we had the left operand of the operator either being a primitive value, which you could not make it a member, a primitive value cannot have a member uh, function, and then we had uh, classes that were not, I do, Classes that uh, uh, were not written by us. We could, we wanted, we wanted our operator to have a class that is implemented by someone else at left side of an operator, like C in and C out. Okay, so for those cases, again, we cannot modify the code of someone else. Therefore, uh, we make that one uh, a helper function, a helper member function member functions or uh, helper member functions, helper member operators, uh, sorry, helper functions or helper member, uh, helper uh, operators are uh, completely the same thing. Um, we should not give operators an extra credit to think that they are something special. Operators are re really functions, regular functions, member functions or uh, otherwise that you, um, what we have to just understand the unlike regular functions, operators can be called in two different ways. Using their function name, like regular function, or using their operator face, like an operator. We demonstrated in many different ways on that one. We talked about uh, uh, operators that are binary, but uh, they don't have side effect, like A plus B. Uh, and we said they can be members, but we have to make sure they are constants. Um, and we could have operators, uh, 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 unary operators uh, that don't have any side effect, and we can have unary operators that can have side effect, like plus plus. And we said, uh, unlike regular unary operators, plus plus and minus minus are a little freaky because they can appear before and after. And we said if it comes before, it's like any other unary operator that you overload, but it comes when it comes after to distinguish which one is what we add an integer as an argument over there with no name so that int that we put in the parentheses at line 20 is just the flag to say this plus plus is postfix and the action that you had in postfix with primitive uh, values where first uh, um, the value was extracted and then it was added by one is not coming through the overload that you have. If you want to do something, you have to manually program it to work that way. Again, you have to always remember, overload means to create a new, absolutely new function, but with the name of an already existing function. So when you create the plus plus operator that is postfix, it's not gonna act like the plus plus for, uh, for an integer. If you want it to, you have to program it that way. Now we saw how we did it. We kept the value of the current object. Then we added one and we returned the old one to kind of fool the uh, user to, to have it that way. Then we talked about overloading C in and C out and we said they are helper functions. Uh, making them as friends are not a good idea. We said friends are for knife in the back, if you remember, in object orientation. You only make something a friend if you want to make if you wanted to own something and methods functions are never are are not supposed to own objects they don't make sense that's why 
friend methods are usually not a good idea. You are uh, better off creating accessor functions specifically for what that method needs to access. For example, for uh, insertion and extraction operator, when I want to do insertion operator into O3, it means I want to print the object. Instead of making that operator a friend, I create a print function and I call that one instead. So I'm not going to make it a friend. Or when I'm doing extraction operator with iStream to read the object from console, I'm not going to make that a friend. I'm going to create an I, uh, a read function and call that one instead. <coughs> and the other example was over here for uh, um, a binary operator. The left-hand operator is uh, a primitive one, and that's why we had to have a helper function. And even for that, you can always reuse what you have over there. And we said, do not um, uh, make it a friend. We talked about conversion operators, which uh, they, they get triggered when your object is casted to, to something. So if, uh, if, I have a, uh, ob if I have a class name, and I want to be able to cast this class, to constant character pointer, and when that the, that's the case, I want the name to be returned. That's what that's what you do. Or in this case over here, we said uh, um, actually some people actually uh, uh, implemented this already and sent me the code. We said that when we want our integer to be converted to an to be casted to an integer, we want it. To return the value, therefore we create the conversion operators. We said the conversion operators, unlike regular operators, they don't have a return value because they are their return value. When you are casting something to an integer, obviously it has to return an integer. When you're casting something to a float, so if I wanted this int integer to uh, return, a, when it's casting to a float, return a floating point variable value, then what I had to do is to write operator or double operator say double and I put over here const and implementing this in integer where is the thing I'm just gonna do it. so it's gonna be it's going to be integer operator double const and what I'm gonna do I'm gonna return the double casted of m value so essentially I am doing the casting uh, behind the scene, so it's as if they are casting, but they don't know actually I am calling the regular cast when that happens. Anyways, so that's that one. And oh, well, these are the testers for insertion and all the things that we have done, so well, we did it, okay? <clears throat> Um, before we go to the topic of the day, which is uh, different types of copying, when something cop gets copied, we have to see, it, first of all, when we say copy, when copying happens. We have to write the code and understand when I say copy, when does systems start copying your classes? We have, to, we have to know when it's triggered, and then when it's triggered, we're going to uh, tap into it and say, when copying is supposed to happen, do this. So we tell the compiler what to do when copying is supposed to happen. And we're going to see why we need to do that. But before doing that, because we are in operators and read and write and see in and see out, I just want to quickly go through files using uh, the uh, C++ system. Uh, because teaching it's going to take around three minutes, and, and that's what I'm going to do. Okay. When you, are when you are writing something on C out, you are not creating an object called C out. Why? Because C out is console. Console is something unique. It's your monitor. It's the window the thing is getting printed on. You don't have two of them. Because it's a unique thing, they already instantiated uh, O stream for you. They called it C out, and they kept it somewhere. So everybody uses the same thing. So if two different parts of your program is printing on it, they get printed on the same screen. I think that that is understandable uh, for everyone, right? And when I do C in, it's only a keyboard that you're receiving the values from. 
I don't have two keyboards, right? So it's one keyboard and I'm entering the values from that keyboard to go to my program. And if two different parts of my program are reading from keyboard, they should read from the same keyboard. That's why they instantiated this, that C in uh, as a, a unique object, a unique global object. We know how it's done. I demonstrated before. Um, and um, uh, they give that to you, so you use C in uh, for that one. But if I want to use files, files is to write into and read from, correct? So therefore, you can have five different files. So they didn't instantiate anything for your file. If you want to write into a file, you have to instantiate the C out yourself for a file, OK? And how it's done, it's very simple. So I'll demonstrate it to you it, it, literally three minutes. I'll teach it to you, and I'll tell you why three minutes. So if you want to write into a file, first of all, you have to include the F stream, OK? And I have to tell you something about these files. <clears throat> Oops, wrong one. Yeah. I have to tell you something about these files. So in, <clears throat> in C++, we have a major class up there, and that class is called IO stream. So this is called IOS. Sorry, basic input output thingy that we have. Let's make it a little bigger. Ah, anyways, so that's called iOS. <clears throat> that's iOS. <clears throat> and then out of this iOS, uh, two classes are in, in, inherited. These two classes are OStream and iStream that you are using. So in here, you have OStream to do your C out thingy, OStream, OK? And then in here, you have another one called iStream. And this iStream, OStream, is instantiated into C out. So essentially, what you have over here, <coughs> this OStream, is somewhere instantiated to be C out. And this one is instantiated somewhere to be C in. <coughs> and that's how you read and write. OK? Now, out of this OStream, another class is inherited, which means it has a child type of a thing. OK, we talked about what was inheritance. I don't need to teach you how to do inheritance. We just want to understand the concept. What was inheritance? Do you remember? Inheritance would be taking a common like member functions or attributes from a parent, inheriting them into a child. So like oh, what is the, the phrase that we use to understand something is inheritance and not? Do you remember? Like we say, if something is this type of thing, it's inheritance. If it's that type of things, it's a property. You remember? Glasses. Okay. Uh, you have glasses, right? Are you glasses? You have glasses, right? Okay. So when somebody is something, it's inheritance. <laughs> if somebody is, is something, is something, that's inheritance. A car is a vehicle. A car, it's not. A car is a vehicle, right? <laughs> if somebody says, it is, yes. <laughs> yes, okay. <clears throat> okay. Uh, so when you have is a relationship, it's always inheritance. When you have has a relationship, that's property. Car has wheels. Car has steering wheel. Car has an engine. Car is not an engine. Car has an engine, right? So, and we can go back to the example that I gave you. So, uh, I, would, I said, uh, motorcycle is a bicycle. That, yada, yada, yada. You add some features to it, right? So, I'm telling you, OStream is an iOS. iStream is an iOS. It means it's getting everything. Like, I would say, a motorcycle is a vehicle, a car is a vehicle, an airplane is a vehicle. They are all vehicles. So you know they are all going to take passengers around. That's why we call them vehicles, right? Or some, something cargo around. We know their, prop, their, their purpose is that. So when I say OStream is an iOS, it means that it's an input-output device. Now, in this case, it's only output. And iStream is an input-output device, right? So we know that. So out of these two, two little things are inherited. So out of this O stream of mine, two things are inherited. One is, <laughs> uh, 
Let's go like that. One is OF stream and the other one is IF stream. So <clears throat> why, why I am insisting on this and, and, and telling, so this is uh, OF stream and this one is IF stream. And these two guys got, these two uh, objects got married and they got a child and that child is called F stream. Why? I'll explain. That's called multiple inheritance. That's one of the features that are supported in C++. So this is F stream. Okay? So OF stream is an O stream, which means it's a C out. Anything you do with C out, OF stream does it too. That's what it means. If I told you BMW is a car, you can drive it if you have a driver's license. It, you don't care if it's a BMW or it's a Ford or it's a Tesla. It doesn't matter. Car is a car. They all handle the same way. I don't need to teach you how to use it. That's why I'm telling you for files, I don't need to teach you anything. Because OF stream is a C out. IF stream is a C in. It's to read something from a device. If you know how to use C in, you know how to use IF stream. What is F stream? Because a file is not only for reading. You can read and write from the same file, right? You can write into a file and then read from the exact same file. That's why they put them together and make them F stream. We don't care about that. We're going to just do OF stream, I, o, o, F stream and IF stream now. F stream is OP345. Okay? So, so what I'm going to do over here is to tell you how it's done. So as I told you, O stream and I stream, they had to actually instantiate it because they were unique objects. But OF stream and IF stream, no, you don't need to. How you do that? You literally, first of all, you include F stream. F stream is the place that it has a definition for all these guys. And it is standard uh, namespace. We know that. So you say OF stream, you name it something, my file. Okay? Now, if you wanted to write a constructor for a file, what would you pass to it, constructor? If you would have written it, what would you pass to a constructor of a file? If you want to build something that represents the file, what does that object need? A pass. A pass? <laughs> what the, does it need? The name of the file. The name of the file. It's usually because people who wrote this are like me and you. They want to design something that makes sense. So you just pass a file name to it. That's all. And because it's an object, it has a constructor, it has a destructor, and all those, all those good stuff, you don't need to, like C language, open a file or close a file. You just simply say, say I don't know, data.txt. All right? That's it. Because it has a destructor, when the object's getting destroyed, the destructor is going to close the file. Because it has a constructor, the constructor is going to open the file. So how did you write in C out? I wrote like this in C out, right? See what I'm going to do? I'm just going to copy this and write over here my file. Done. I don't need to learn anything. They all work the same way. And when I run this program, you will see that it runs, and three years later, it printed something on that one, right? But if I actually open the, the, the thing, you see there's a data.txt, and you open that one, there is that information in it. So you don't need to learn anything. You are already doing it. You want to left justify in a file, do it exactly like you did on the screen. You want to read from the file, it's actually easier. Because when you are reading from the keyboard, you have the stupid user sitting over there. Keep making mistakes. When there is a file, they give you the file. You look at the format of the file, okay, I'm going to have the student number, then I'm going to have a comma, then I'm going to have this. So you know what the file is. You write and program exactly how the file is written. You read the student number, as soon as you get to a comma, you stop, you ignore the comma, you read, I don't know, the student name up to a comma, because it's a comma separated file, and then you stop. So everything that you learn to do with ignore and everything with seeing, you can do it with this one. And 
if any of these things fail because it's a file, you're not going to ask the user to enter again. All you're going to say is it's a corrupted file, the data is not right. Done. They have to fix the file and do it again. It's not your responsibility. The file was screwed up. You follow? So that's it. So that's O stream. So if I want to do that, like do it like that now, if I want to read from that file, so, so this is the output that, that uh, so I'm going to write over here, um, file output, file output.txt, uh, dot .cpp. And I'll, I'm going to show you something beautiful, actually. You'll see. Give me two seconds. Uh, So in here, I'm going to actually, I'm going to create an IF stream. And in here, I'm going to put the data.txt, so it's going to read from it, right? So the very first thing over there is a 10, right? So I'm going to put integer over here. I'm going to say date, right? Then I'm going to have a dash that I'm going to skip. Then I have the month that I'm going to read, right? Uh, correct? So I'm just going to say over here, I don't know, character uh, date. Uh, a month, and it's four characters because I know it's three digits, right? And then what I'm going to do after, I'm going to, uh, what do I do after? I go, uh, I'm going to read that October thingy, so in here, so, no, 10 is the uh, session, actually it was 11, not 10, why am I saying 10? I have to fix the other one. It's 11, just a second. It's 11 October 11. There we go. But anyways, let's just start for, for, with the first one. So now I have this, my file over here, opening data.txt for reading. If I just go, if I just go my, if I just go my file into session, then I'll go see out session. OF stream. OF stream. Why is it giving me an error in here? What did I do? I have stupid. Bad boy, I am. Okay. I want to say stupid compiler, but this time it wasn't really good. <laughs> okay, let's bring that over here. So, yeah. So now in here, I'm going to say, and, and I'm going to go see out session. So it's going to read the very first thing that it sees in here. Uh, where is it? Uh, there you go. See that? So the very first thing that is coming over here is 10. I'm going to make it 11 because I want it to be 11, right? So now when I run the program, it's going to open it up, read it, and, and show, show, show an 11 over there. So it reads it from a file. And then I want to read, uh, I don't know, uh, ignore a character. So I'm going to say my file dot ignore. So it knows one character, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna write over here. Uh, I'm gonna say over here it's a, a character date, and um, let's put ten characters for it just for the heck of it. And then I'm gonna say my file like that, and I'm gonna say date. Obviously, it's gonna keep reading characters until it hits a delimiter. The limiter for extraction operator is white space, right? So it's gonna stop at that white space. So if I, if I run it like this, it's, it's going to exactly do what you, what you see in there. Oh. See out, uh, date, and L. There we go. See? So it's much easier to read from file or write into file. And that was it. Done. I don't need to teach anything because you know exactly how they work. Just look at the file that you're reading, and you got the proper C in statements that you have, but for the file. That's it. And exactly like C in, exactly like C in, it's, it's a shy thing, which means if something goes wrong, it exactly is. So if I put over here data123 and try to open this thing, what's going to happen to my file? It's going to fail. Exactly like C in. So in here, I'm going to say if my file do like this, which means if everything is good, if it's not, in here I'm going to say see out, oh, sorry, else, uh, see out, fail to open the file. And 
and run the program, obviously it's going to say fail to open the file because the file doesn't exist. And if the file is there, then it's not going to fail and it's going to do what the file is supposed to do. Ta-da. Okay? Again, exactly C in. Whatever we taught about C in, it's there. Okay? Not only that, my name is Fardat, but you can call me Mr. Soleiman, right? So you can call my father's name to call me, right? You can do the same thing to files, which means if you overloaded something to get printed on a screen and it's receiving O stream, you can pass a file to it, no problem. Because that's the last name of the file, right? A file is a O stream, correct? OF stream is a O stream, so you can refer to it as an O stream. And automatically, it's going to do what a file is supposed to do because it's a file. So if you overload something to print on a screen, you can simply print it on a file. It doesn't make any difference. You don't need to overload it. The one that works with the screen, you can pass a file to it because it is inheritance and it's essentially what it is. Are we good? That's it. So enjoy. Go knock yourself out and try practice and try to do things. And I never want to teach more than this because it defies the whole purpose of inheritance in object orientation. We talked about all these formatting and everything with C in and C out. I'm just telling you it's the exact same thing with files. Just create a file and read from a file. Okay? Again, reading from the file, it's very peaceful <laughs> because you, you know what is coming. Okay. And you can just... Uh, uh, read it, and that's it. Okay, so that's that. Well, and this is file input dot cp. Remember all the things that I told you, like make sure that when you are printing something, you pass the, the reference through it. And I told you when you are writing a print, make sure that print receives the reference of something and ret reference of I stream, so O stream, and returns the reference of O. That's what was it for. When you are actually overloading your C out for, with your print, you pass through it, right? So if you put a file, the file goes to your print, your print prints in a file instead of a screen. That's why I said blindly follow it, and when the time comes, you'll see why that happens. You're going to learn how to program that. This is called virtuality and, 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 and abstract and, and base and, uh, and, and uh, um, yeah, it's, it's called virtuality, virtualism. So we'll come, we'll, we'll come to it soon uh, uh, after the break, okay? Uh, when I say not, not break, this break, Study break. <laughs> okay, so two weeks from now. And by the way, you know, your midterm is on first five thingy. So what I'm talking about today, not that please block your mind because it's not going to be tested, but what I'm talking about today is not on the test, okay? It's week five is the last thing that you're going to have in your, in your midterm. Okay, weeks one to five inclusive. That's what it means, right? Questions? Suggestions? Yes. Okay. What, what, what? Take, go, go on Blackboard and look at all the weeks. If whatever is in there, that's what it's going to be. That's what I mean. It says reading for week five was operated No, no, not the reading, the topics that is covered. No, 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 no. Just, no, no. Just look at the weeks. The, the topics of the week one to five is what is going to get covered in, in, a, in a midterm. Okay? Not that not to study these things. Please do, but yeah. And your project is going to be up soon, too. So uh, uh, the second half of the semester, no more part two. No more DIY for workshops. You only have one workshop per week. Okay? It's not two parts. But instead, the project is going to kick in. Okay? All right, so let's talk about 
copying and when copying happens. Okay? So, we are okay? All right, remember the label thingy we created for the, for the, so I'm going to do a very ugly version of that one over here. So I'm going to have over here a class created, a label, okay? And we're going to have over here, I'm not going to make it dynamic for now. So it's going to be character value, uh, text of label, whatever it is. Let's put 256 characters over here. And uh, we're going to have a public thingy over here that we can set the label. So label. And in here, I'm going to put the constant character pointer text. Okay. Now, new thing. Initialization area. When you are creating uh, a constructor, you can initialize the value that you have in M text. You know you can initialize it over here, right? But not that one. You can initialize it somewhere else. So uh, let me just write this first. So I'm going to have over here the destructor of label. Although this destructor is not going to do anything, but I'm just writing it so we can see when things are getting created and destroyed. And uh, let's create a, a set to set the label to some value. So I'm going to have over here label, reference operator. I'm setting it to a constant character pointer, whatever is coming in, uh, text. What else we need to do? We need to display it so we can see it. So I'm going to have over here, again, all the things that I'm doing is review. There is a reason that I don't bring something from before. Because this kind of forces you to review everything that we talked about down to this point. So in here, I'm going to have an O stream uh, uh, reference print. O stream reference OSDR set to C out. And then we have iStream reference read for iStream reference ISDR that is set to C in by default. We want to display this. So what we do, we go O stream reference. Again, remember that I told you you have to be able to do it um, on top of your head easily. So that's O stream operator, O stream reference OSDR and a constant uh, label reference L over here. That reminds me that the print should be a constant. And we have O stream operator, uh, sorry, I stream operator insertion that is I stream ISDR. And this one is not constant because I am changing the label to a value label L. Are we okay with this? Now, because this is something that I'm doing in right this in this context, um, I am going to uh, only the, the constructor, I'm going to write it outside. Everything else, I'm going to write it inside. So the constructor, I'm going to write it over here. I'm going to say label, label, and I'm going to receive a constant character pointer text. Okay. Now, <clears throat> if I want to... Um, I'm going to write another thing over here. Uh, the initialization area, we'll talk about it later. It doesn't make sense with this right at the moment. So I'm going to create a constructor over here. That is a default constructor. I want to be able to just an empty, create an empty, empty label. And I'll make it empty. So this is essentially supposed to be an empty uh, constructor, right? Because that... Uh, uh, initialization at line 5 will initialize M text, correct? So I don't need to write anything in this. When you don't need to write anything itself, you can tell the compiler to do that for you. So you can say over here equals the default. That means, hey, I know I'm supposed to create a default constructor, but it's empty. It's not supposed to do anything. You do it for me. That's what it is, okay? But later on, if I want to add something to it, then I'll take it off the default mode type of a thing. So now in here, I'm going to say uh, uh, I need C. Oh, do my utils have this stuff in it? 
yeah, I do have string copy in it. Good, so I'll do that one. Do I have, and I have a stream length too, beautiful. So I'm gonna include my utils, include utils. Huh. Didn't I cut, I think I made them. Give me a second. Let me pause. So I'm including utils for the string thingy that I have. Utils. And obviously, it's got to be using namespace STD. SDDS. OK, so let's create the copy, uh, the, the, the label. So what I need to do in here is this. <clears throat> I need to. I need to see if the text over here is uh, uh, pointing to anything or not. Otherwise, I'm not going to do anything. So I'm going to say if text exists, if I have something over here, uh, then I'm going to say str copy into the text, uh, into the uh, m text, the text, right? It is str copy. Strange stuff are happening today. Why is it giving this? Hmm. Maybe, I don't know, SDDS, just want to make sure. Okay, anyways. <clears throat> I didn't include uh, C string. Uh, I know, but probably a C string is included in one of these two. That's the reason. But anyways, I clarified it. That's, that's how you do it, right? If it's a confusion, uh, you do it like that. So I, I'm copying like that. So uh, SDR copy into the text. Uh, so that's the constructor. Uh, and the destructor doesn't do anything yet. So I'm just going to make it default. But later on, I'm going to change it because I just want to compile it. Uh, the assignment over here overwrites it. So if I want to assign that one to, it's essentially the same thing. So uh, it's going to say um, if text. And here I'm going to go copy into the value of text. But if it's null, then I have to make it empty, right? So else. If it's null, I have to make it empty. So I'm going to say m text 0 is set to 0. OK? And at the end, I'm going to say return this. Print prints the, the, uh, um, the label. So it's going to go OSDR uh, m text. And this is going to read it. So I'm going to go uh, ISDR. The, um, should we get it up to new line or we just get it? Mm. I'll go get line. Uh, get line into M text uh, up to 256. And I'm just going to return that one. And in here, I'm going to return this one. And what else do I need to implement? These two operators. You can always do it with your eyes closed. Remember, return uh, L dot uh, print, and you pass the OS stream to it. This one is the exact same thing. So in here, I'm going to say uh, is, uh, L dot read, and I'm going to pass the ISDR to it and return it. So there you go. I wrote a label, and I can test it. So I can create a label, L, like that. Um, I can go see out L over here to see what I have in it. OK? And then what I can do is uh, set it to something. So L is. Uh, um, op244 and aa-zaa. So it's set to that one, and I'll see out it again to make sure everything is good. 
control F5, run it to see if we have the thing. And three years later, I have an empty label at the beginning. Now I have a label that has that with that thing in it. Are we okay? We okay? All right. As a matter of fact, it's better to actually, when I'm printing, let's actually, because it's a label, right? Let's put that one in here so I don't have to keep typing it over there. So I'll do it like this. So I'll put it between these two right in there. So in here, all I need to do is to say label. Because it's a label, right? It should be different with a regular string. It works this exact same way. It just shows the value, right? Like that. We OK? OK. So now we need to understand when copying happens. We need to understand when copying happens. To understand when copying happens, copying happens in two different ways. One, at the moment of creation, where you copy something, which means you are building an object out of another object, which means over here, I create another label. I create another label, M, and I set it to L. So this copying is copying at the moment of creation, correct? So when you are building M, you are using L to, to initialize it. That's copy number one. Copy number two is to overwrite some object with an ob object of an identical type. So if I have over here something like label n set to, so we have n in here, I can go see out n is n. Right? Now I'm going to say n is set to m and show m again. This is another copying. So this one is copying by assignment, right? This is not at the moment of, of creation. This is copying by assignment. Are we okay with this? Any questions down to this point? I want to know when copying happens, and later on we're going to see why we need to know this. We're okay down to this point? Pardon me? Oh. Insertion operator. Yeah. Okay. Now, please listen carefully. The other one is copying when you are constructing the object. The bottom one is copying when you are setting the object. It means object already exists. We already know how to implement this, right? We learned operator overloading, correct? So if I want to do that, how do I do it? First of all, if I run it now, you will see that Oh, I didn't show the M. Let me show the M too. So let's show all of them actually. So L. M and N. And I do not need this. Uh, sure, why not? We can do that. Show all three of them again. And oh, I should have actually put over here element so we know what we are talking about. So L. M and N. So so when I run the program, we will see that 
it is working perfectly now. It actually, I don't need to implement anything. Take a look at it. So the first one, I have L, and the second one, M is L because it, it got copied at the moment of creation, right? Right? And the other one, I set L to OP244, yada, yada, yada. As you see, I show everything. It, it, they are exactly what, it were, what they were before. Now copy assignment that I'm copying by assignment at line 51. It actually copies M to N, and as because of that, everything becomes L. Do we understand this? Right? So I didn't need to do anything. It actually works by itself. Why? Because when you have two objects of the same type, when compiler sees there are two objects of the same type, we know that they are sitting somewhere in memory, correct? And they're identical. Compiler doesn't care what's inside. Like a Xerox machine, that if you give this piece of paper that this lady wrote beautifully, if you put it on a Xerox machine, it doesn't care if it's written in Chinese, or we don't have a Chinese language. Man, actually, I think they're written the same way, right? Mandarin and Cantonese? Any Chinese, anyone from China? No? No one from? OK. Mad Cantonese and Mandarin are written the same way, right? Yeah, so, so bad example, I guess. Because, so, so let's go. If it's written in English, or it's written in French, or it's written in Farsi or Arabic, it doesn't matter. You put it in a Xerox machine, the result comes up exactly the same. Why? The Xerox machine knows how to read Arabic? No. Right? Does the Xerox machine know what is English? No. So how, come, how can it copy it? The nature is that it doesn't care what's on the paper. It goes pixel by pixel and copies everything from one to another. Therefore, you have identical pages. Are we OK with this? Are we OK with this? Are we OK? No? You're OK? You're OK? All right. For copying like that, because they are identical, compiler doesn't care what's inside. It goes byte by byte, copies the first byte of the source, into the first byte of the target, then second byte of the source to the second byte of the target, and copies everything in detail into the other one. Therefore, the outcome is perfect. Right? It doesn't care if it's two doubles over there or a character string. It copies everything from one to another. Therefore, copying happens. And the same thing for assignments over here. All right? Are we OK? Are we OK down to this point? Are we OK one? Are we OK two? OK, so we have two types of copying, and they happen. Copying actually happens in many different places. Assignment happens over there. But copying happens in many different places, behind the scene, without you knowing. OK, we'll get to it soon. But for now, let's use the obvious one. Now, take a look at this. I'm going to make this a pointer and make this dynamic so that the fault thingy cannot remain the fault anymore. Actually, it can't. Let's let it be like that. But this one cannot be the fault anymore. In here, I have to actually say something like delete M text, right? Dynamic memory allocation. When I'm setting over here, how do I set? First, I have to go if. This, actually, I should have done that. Oh, no, no, not this one over here. So in here, if text exists, first I have to delete M text, correct? M text. First I have to delete M text. Then I have to say M text is set to new character SDDS strlen of text plus one. And then do the copying, right? And if the text is null, I have to make M text null. So I have to make sure that this actually deletes it outside. OK? So text uh, gets deleted when assignment is happening over there. Then it comes over here and uh, sets the, uh, if the text that is coming in actually exists, there is something over there. It's going to uh, uh, measure it, allocate memory, copy it. If not, it's just going to set M text to, to null. It's better to put null, not zero. So I'll, I'll put over here null PTR. 
and returns it. Are we okay with this? So that's how it's setting it. And for the constructor of the thing that we have, in here I am doing the copying thing. I, I, I'm going to reuse my code over there. First, in here, I'm going to make sure that, the, that it is, uh, it, the text is null. It is null already. And then what I'm going to do in here, I'm going to reuse my code by saying operator equal, and I'm going to pass the text, right? It's just a function. I can call it. Are we okay with this? I just wrote a function that dynamically allocates the memory for me, right? That operator equal is doing dynamic memory for me. Why everybody thinks that I'm, I'm crazy? Are we okay with this? Because that operator equal is a function, right? And it's setting the text dynamically. I'm just going to use that one instead. So I'm not going to write. So the constructor is constructing, and everything seems nice, fine, and dandy, right? Okay. Now let's run the program. So uh, do I have anything over here that is missing? Nerds? And those who study a lot, please? <laughs> do we? Am I missing something in here? When I don't have anything in it, it's blank. Oh, the printout is going to fail if it's null. So in here, I have to say, if this is null, uh, then show blank. If this, is not, if this is not null, show M text. Otherwise, uh, show uh, nothing, a blank thingy, right? So I'm going to put this like this. So if M text has a value, it prints it. Otherwise, it's going to print nothing. Are we good? Are we OK? So running the program, this is going to happen. Boom. Why? Why this happened? Why it crashed on me? What I thought, everything is beautiful. OK? So let's abort this. And this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to remove the copying thingy that I had. OK? And remove the M. And remove the assignment thingy that I had. And I'm going to run it again. Oh, I have an M. Eesh. No. Still I have M. Oh, it is running somewhere. Uh, cannot open. Is it running? Oh, because, oh yeah, here. Here. <laughs> Sorry. Some garbage came out over there. I should. So I have to wait for it to crash. And it's saying that. <laughs> there we go. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, because it was the executor was still running, right? It crashed, right? So, so let's do it one more time. There we go. Nothing went wrong. It actually worked. So the problem, so now let's go back. The problem solving. Now I'm going to bring back the assignment. See if the assignment is cause of crash. So I'm just going to create an assignment in here, and I'm going to put, say, L in, 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 N, and, and run it. It looks that it's running fine, but it crashed at the end, right? So cop, the, the assignment is one of the reasons. Now we wait for it to crash. Sorry. There you go. OK, so let's remove that one and bring the, bring the copy construction. And I'm just going to take one of the ends. I'm not going to waste my time. OK, if I do something like this, what's going to happen? Again, so the action of copying when I, in any case, either assign copying or copying at the moment of creation, when I had dynamic memory, failed. Why? The reason is this. Oh, it didn't crash? Come on. Stop, stop, stop. There we go. So. Bad copying. <laughs> Let's see what is that. So I created some class with dynamic memory, right? 
And we know this is what happens. When I have dynamic memory, the memory of what I have is not inside the class anymore. It's in the heap, and the pointer is pointing to it, right? So what I do, I try to, I want to try and copy this thing into another one, right? When the copying happens, as I mentioned before, <coughs> when I write copying in any case, the compiler doesn't know that the contents of the thing is outside, right? So as it did with the one that did not have dynamic memory, it copies all the contents of one class into another, right? So it copies the pointer of m data of A in the pointer of m data of B, right? And everything else. When it's copied, what happens? Does the memory that is allocated actually, it, it, does it get copied? No. What happens is that they are now are going to point to the same piece of memory because it's the pointer that is copied, not the data. So when you do this, compiler thinks everything's fine and dandy and beautiful, so it keeps going. Okay? But the problem is that the data is over there is not copied. And what happens is that after the destructor calls, that one of the destructor of the object is called, that destructor deletes the data of the object. And therefore, what's remaining is pointing to a piece of memory, but there is nothing in there. So when the destructor of the second one gets called, then it crashes. OK? And that's not the only thing. When you are doing assignment, what happens? When you're doing assignment, it's even worse. When you are doing copying, you're OK. When you are doing assignment, what you are assigning to already has data. So in the first one, it's only a crash at the end, right? In this one, <clears throat> it is not only a crash, but when the assignment between the two happens, it copies everything from one to another. So what happens is that the first one becomes memory leak. Because now they are pointed to the data of the other one, and what it had before is lost. And then, obviously, <clears throat> when everything's over, <clears throat> the destructor of the first one is called, and the second one, when it's getting destroyed, you're going to have a crash for it. So what can we do? <clears throat> what can we do when stuff like these happen? It's very easy. For the assignment, we already know how to tap into it. We already know how to overload an assignment operator. <clears throat> and uh, it's very simple and straightforward. We've already done it. So we are saying over here, this is an assignment. OK? At left side, I have a label. At right side, I have a label, too. It's a binary thing. I'm going to do it very simple, exact, exactly as I did for the other one. Label, reference, operator. Assignment, the difference is that my argument is another label. That's all it is, right? So now in here, I'm going to say constant label reference L or right hand operator, whatever. OK? And I start implementing it. So now I know the operator, the, the, the thing actually exists over here, right? I already have the code for it in here for the setting that I did for dynamic memory allocation, right? So what I'm going to do, I can do it from scratch, or I can just reuse the code. I'm just going to reuse the code. I'm going to say, call the operator. Whoa. Call the operator equal that accepts RO dot M text and set my data to it. And when you're done, return it, because that one is returning the label too, right? <clears throat> so what happens, it gets the data of the other one in this text, deletes the current one. If that data exists, it allocates and copies it separately. If it doesn't exist, it sets this one to null, which means everything's going to be good. So essentially, what it's going to do is this. What it's going to do is this. When something like this appears and it wants to actually do the copying, in first shot, <clears throat> when assignment happens, the very first thing that it does, it deletes the target. 
uh, that deletes the data of the target. Then it checks to see what is the size of the other one and allocates memory exactly to that size. Then copies everything from them to another and then copies the size if we have one. If this one has two, the other one that doesn't have to. And therefore, I have now two objects with two dynamic memory allocations that is copied. And everything's beautiful and nice. So now if I come back over here, <clears throat> we will see that because I created this assignment operator, if I come down over here and bring the assignment in, now when I run the program, it still fails. Wow. Abort. Oh, I have the copy. I didn't do the copy. I just did the assignment. And that shows you that assignment at the moment of creation is not assignment. It's copying. Okay? <clears throat> now let's run it one more time. Oh. You. Comment. DM. Oh. There we go. Now assignment happens with no problem. Right? So it didn't crash. Now, how do we do the copying? Copying, you are saying, I'm creating an object out of something, right? So essentially, these two are these two are identical. If I do this or this, we know they are they are the same, right? We know that assignment at the moment of creation is a call to the constructor, right? And what is being passed over there? Reference of the same object. So create the constructor for it. We can over to the constructor. I'm going to come over here, right up here. <clears throat> and what I'm going to do is write in the constructor for that. So I'm going to say label const uh, label reference L. And I'm not going to bother with anything because mText is already set to null. All I'm going to say is operator equal, and I'm going to pass the L to it. I'm going to reuse my code, right? Because my operator handles null cases, I'm OK. If it doesn't, then you can't. You have to actually write the code from scratch. But now that I have done that, I have the copy constructor taken care of. Now I can come back over here and uncomment everything, and my program should. I hope that it doesn't. And it fails, because then we have something to work on. <clears throat> there we go. This, ladies and gentlemen, is called rule of three. Rule of three, which means at any moment of time, if you have a class with resource, what is resource? A class that doesn't have the data inside its own belly. When it's pointing outside of its scope for stuff, anything. When you have that situation, rule of three must be implemented. What are rule of, what are rule of three? Copy construction, copy assignment, and destructor. These three must be implemented so you have a safe object to work with. Okay? That's down to this point. Then for efficiency, when we go to OP345, you're going to see it becomes rule of five. But for now, it's rule of three. Okay? Rule of three takes care of everything. It works. Everything works. But you can make it more efficient by adding two more rules, just efficiency. But we are okay. Now, let's take a look <clears throat> and see when copying happens, actually. Okay? So what we can do over here is to add a few things. So now what I did was good copying. So good copying, if I want to show you what, I, what we have done for good copying, this is essentially it. So when good copying happens, something like this happens. So you have the thing, and the other one is a brand new object. When you create one, it measures the, the, the value of the one that is being copied, copied every, copies everything in it, and then we're done. So the only difference between copy construction and a uh, copy assignment is that in copy construction, you don't need to delete uh, the current resource, the current data, because if the, the object is a newborn, right? But when you are doing copy assignment, you have to take care of the already existing data. That's the only difference. We okay? All right? Now, 
to understand what copying is and how, how, we, how we can actually know when copying happens, uh, it's a good idea just to, over here, I'm going to go see out uh, copying. Actually, I'm going to go see log. Copying. Copying L. So it's going to show what is being copied. Okay? And, uh, and the other one, I'm going to go C log. Uh, assigning to RO. Okay? We can actually say assigning this to RO. That's better. So it's assigning me to something else. Okay? So we can actually walk through and see how things are happening. Um, and uh, let's destroy, uh, call the, where is the destructor? Uh, that's a default constructor. Let's actually do this, like this over here, so we, can, so we know these two. So in here, it's going to be C out. Uh, oh, sorry, C log. I'll tell you why I'm doing C log over here. C log, uh, C log uh, defaulting label. Okay, in here I'm going to say, oh, not here, I'm going to say creating label. Where is it? Uh, where's the constructor? What? Oh, where did I put the constructor? If you see it, let me know. I lost it. Oh, here's the constructor. So in here, so in here, I'm going to say uh, C out, uh, C log, created this. <clears throat> okay, so now when we run it, we can actually see what happens with 50,000 errors. No operator, yada, yada. What? What does it say? Give me a second. Yeah, I'll, let's, it should work. Let me, give me two seconds. Let me take a look. It takes right hand operator of constant label. Ah. C log and CR apparently are not the same thing I thought they are. Anyways, let me change it over here for now. Uh, let's let's try C error and see what happens. Huh? C out. It should work. I don't know why it's not working. I'm just gonna. Oh no, so it wasn't C logs error. What did I do wrong in here? It says there is nothing that accepts a constant label as a right hand operator. Didn't we? Oh, oh. You know what happened? Anybody knows? Huh? No. Anybody knows what happened? Let me first bring this back to C log while you're thinking what happened. Anybody knows what happened? <clears throat> C log, C log, let me just make the C logs <clears throat> and then we're gonna go after it. <clears throat> I'll tell you what's wrong with it. C log. Yes, we do, here. So why it cannot recognize it? C log, that's the one. C log, I just want to make sure they're all there. And C log. 
Okay, the reason is that, let me just cut it short. Uh, the, the, the helper functions are coming after because I didn't create a module. I don't have a header file or anything. So I have to put the, I have to put the <coughs> things that up here, right? But there is a problem now. <laughs> Chicken and the egg. Which one comes first? So I put the prototype up there so my C log can know what's going on, right? But if I put the prototype up there, it's going to say, I don't know what is label. What can I do? It's called forward declaration. As you can create a prototype for a function, you can create a prototype for a class. So I can actually put a prototype at the top of that thing saying, hey, compiler, that label is a class. Don't worry. So I'm going to say class label. There is only one catch for it. Labels don't have signatures. Like if you forward declare, you cannot create it because it doesn't know what its constructor looks like. You can only have references and pointers to it. And that's it. So when I do something like this, hopefully it's going to work now. <laughs> OK? There we go. So now it says created that, assigning, to, assigning empty to that one, then copying this one. It keeps going like that and shows all the things that are happening. Are you OK? Are we OK? OK. Now. We're going to have a break, and then we come back. We're going to see when copy construction how call is called an assignment and all the good stuff. Yes? Uh, so we promised that the class, because the class has the, not just the declaration, but the definition in it, in our case. So we promised those definitions that such a function does exist where you can override the, uh, like, such a helper function. Does yeah. Exist? So prototype for a function is fine. And then you're promising to the functions that there is a class coming. Coming. I'm not going to tell you what its constructor looks like, so you cannot, you cannot pass a label by value over there. Because if it needs value, it needs to call the copy constructor. You can, reference or pointer, it works. Because for reference and pointer, nothing's created, right? Right? Forward declaration. So now we want to see, uh, let me just put over here, I'm going to say rule of three. So now let's take a look. The most common thing in here, I'm going to create a function called show, and in here I'm going to pass a label L. And I'm going to say see out, see out see out showing L, and I'm going to go to new line. So now if I create a label over here, label A, Okay, so in here I'm going to go C out A, then I'm going to say show A, and C out Okay, so in here I'm going to say before. And here is after. OK, so when you run the program, you will see that <clears throat> why does it say it? Oh, whoops. Let me, I want to do, let me just. Uh, I have reused the code over here, and that's going to be confusing. So instead of, uh, where is the copy construction? Copy construction in here. I'm going to use L dot M text, 
reason, there is a reason for it because I, because I reused it, it, it uh, showed both of them. I just want to show one of them. So I'm going to run it one more time. So as you see over here, <clears throat> uh, we didn't put anything in destructor. Let me put something in a destructor. Where is the destructor? Uh, destructor, destructor. Uh, C log, removing uh, this. Okay, one last time. <clears throat> so now let, let's take a look. This is my main and these are the stuff. So line number 64 created my label, right? Line number 65, it says before my label. Now it passes A to show. Because A is passed by value, we know that a function call means this. When show is called, it actually means show label L set to A. Correct? That's how show is called. That is a copy constructor, which means it's going to copy my label and goes into show. Then it's going to say showing my label. And then at the end, that copy will die because the scope of it will be over. So L in show dies. That's where you see removing my label. Then it comes after and it comes out. We good? Are we okay? Are we okay? All right. Did I do the read thingy? Oh, my read is awful. It's not, I cannot believe I left it over there. This is going to crash like crazy. Uh, <laughs> so in here, I'm going to uh, make something like a ridiculous size for this. So I'm going to go character uh, text, and I'm going to make it 1024. And I'm hoping that nobody's going to enter more than 1024. In here, I'm going to say get text for 1024. 1024. And then after this, I am going to say uh, uh, this is equal to text. And then I'm going to say return ISDR. So that's the correct way of reading because it has to read it dynamically, right? So it's going to read the, uh, and it has to delete the current thing too. And that's where it happens over here. So this will receive uh, um, a text from input and set this object to it. Therefore, it's going to remove the old one and it's not going to have any memory leak. So, so now in here, I'm going to do a get. So get label. In here, I'm going to say label uh, temp. Now I'm going to say, and in here, I'm going to return a label. And I'm going to say C in, C out, enter label value. And I'm going to go C in temp. And then I'm going to go return temp. OK? So now, let me first compile it. Control F7 compiles without execution. So this is good. First of all, I'm going to save this as the one that was rule of three. And I'm going to save it. There you go. Replace it. Yes. Reason is that the other one had a bug. Now it doesn't. OK. So now in here, I'm going to do like this. I'm going to say A is my label. Then I'm going to say A is set to get label. Are we OK? OK. <laughs> All right. Now I'm going to go C out A. OK. Very simple thing. It's water. That's okay. It's not on your keyboard, is it? No. 
So let it go. It's going to get dry. Just don't slip on it. Anyways, so that's what I create, right? Very simple thing. Let's walk through it step by step. Or first, let's run it. So I'm going to run this. Controller 5. So it creates my label. Then it says defaulting label. Enter label value. I'm going to say this is a new label. And I hit enter. See what happens? Assigning this to a new label. That's the assignment that is happening. Uh, uh, with, with, I think this is a new label. And then removing the label. So let me come back over here. So it gets in here. It creates a default label. And you see it's jumping to return first. When you are walking through it, jump to return. OK? That's, uh, C++ compiler becoming smart. OK? Anything passed by value is supposed to get copied. That's the rule. But the, when the code is simple like this, and the temp is not doing much over there. What happens is that it says, because you are creating a local temp over here and I'm returning it out, I'm not going to copy this thing. I'm just going to uh, use that one and return it out. And I'm not going to kill anything new. So what happens is that if this was an old compiler, at this, you would see that is created. Then it would go to the enter label. But because this compiler tries to make the code efficient, it jumps to return first. And then when I click, it goes back up. Take a look. So essentially, it is combining all these things in the return statement. It's crazy the way it tries to make it efficient. In old times, it would create one. It will get the value of the temp. Everything's good. Then it would return to temp. At that moment, it would have copied the temp into a temporary nameless. Then it would kill the temp, return the temp out, so it gets grabbed with the other program. Now, it says, because this is simple, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to make everything right at return time. So temp will not get destroyed. Temp, temp will not get copied. OK? Temp becomes a temporary nameless. So after this it happens, it comes over here. So the, some value that is entered. And now that value is, oh, I didn't hit enter. Oh, I didn't hit enter. OK. Source file changed. Why did it change? Anyways, so it comes over here, receives the value, then returns that value. Comes to get labeled. Now, here is your temporary nameless, which is actually the temp. It is passed to the label over here. The assignment is called to assign the left one, and it comes out, and so on and so forth. Okay? So that's one. Number one. Now let's do another thing. Um, I want to I want to show you. Uh, this efficient thing, this uh, efficiency of uh, the compiler makes it difficult to to teach actually how it happens and create actually a scenario that makes a copy. That's it. I think, uh, yeah. It will create the temp, but at return time. Yeah, exactly. It's got created once. So the thing is that at the time of return, an inefficient compiler that doesn't do the uh, optimizing the code will copy the temp 
kill the temp and te send the copy out. That happens all the time. That's why you have to have rule of three. In here, it doesn't have it. I, it, it doesn't do it because it's, it's uh, making the code efficient. I'll try to go find out, see if I can actually check a flag so this uh, optimization doesn't happen, so it actually make it inefficient uh, and come up with an example. But anyways, uh, uh, keep that in mind. I wanted to see if I could actually show you something, but I couldn't. Anyways, uh, time's up. We'll talk about uh, the rest of it later. Please uh, uh, play with this code and make sure uh, you understand how it works. <laughs>